important. So this is Dance Rustique, the first section. So as I said, um, it's important to practice one thing at a time. So I'm going to start off here by working on the bow strokes. As we discussed before with Dance Rustique, the semi quavers want to be fairly legato, the quavers want to be fairly uh, jumping. So it's... So... do this work my way through it like that working it uh, making sure I know exactly what I'm doing how much weight do I want on each bow how long is each bow uh, how much gap is there between the bows um, and not worrying too much about playing all the right notes in tune just if if you play wrong notes or it's out of tune it doesn't matter here so <laughs> As I've said in some of my other videos, it's important to break it down into small chunks. So you might want to only do two bars at a time here. Make sure you get your bowings right there. So you take it down into very small chunks there. Make sure that they're right, repeat them. Um, next up, you'd probably want to just check on the notes. So, so when you're doing when I'm practicing just notes, quite often what i do is i mo mostly focus on where the shifts are where the extensions are that kind of thing not worrying too much about the rhythms and actually generally speaking ignoring the rhythm slurring a lot so I would work my way through it like that, just taking taking the rhythm out of it, taking the bowings out of it, just making sure that everything's in tune. Um, and then obviously uh, we work on the dynamics. Um, you can, the first stage is to get the dynamics that are on the page. Uh, stage two of that is then to do the smaller scale dynamics and the phrasing I'll, we'll start off by just doing what's on the page. So we start mezzo forte. Uh, then the next thing we've got marked is a crescendo, which is in bar 16. So I need to make sure that I start with a little bit less bow, a little bit less weight and speed up. Uh, okay, I uh, would practice that for a little bit. And then bar 19. Um, and then I would probably put the metronome on. Um, tick, tick. <laughs> so 
So when I'm doing the metronome work, I don't care too much if I'm out of tune, although it'd be nice if I was in tune. I don't care too much about the dynamics, although some dynamics, if you can do them, is nice. And I don't care too much about the bow strokes, but if you can do the bow strokes in there, it's always nice. Um, then obviously we come to the scale. This is a whole other, a whole other problem here, but so now the easiest way to practice this is to break it down. So the first thing I would do is I would break it into beats. So for example um, and then as I'm doing this I would practice it with a big gap to think first okay next up is and then as I got more comfortable with it I'd close the gaps up and then to make sure that I haven't got these big gaps and joddle, um, the uh, thinking points there too obviously I would then try it a different way so I would practice it in each uh, position so Um, so you've got thinking spots in between each position group. Um, and then obviously you close those gaps up and you close the gaps up. And then hopefully if you've done it with two different, um, different uh, spacings, uh, you, will, you won't end up with any obvious points. Uh, then, you know, you might want to do it a bar at a time. <laughs> and so on so uh, that would be one way of doing it the other really obvious and main way to do this would be with dotted rhythms uh, this is standard speeding up practice <laughs> all the way up and down both both directions on the dots 